Hello everyone, it's time for us to go take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE and see how this particular phone holds up in 2024. Now the thing I will definitely tell you is about this particular device is that for the most part, this is still a very good device in a lot of different ways. I like the S21 FE and I still think it's a very powerful and good phone. It did come out in 2022 so it's not even even really that old of a phone and I do actually I did like the approach Samsung did with the S21 FE and I would argue that the FE this particular model looks better than the S23 FE F just came out last year it's very funny of the way Samsung was approaching that last phone but with the S21 FE I think they did an overall really good job with it and these things have gone down in value so much in the ad market so I can't wait to even just talk about this phone right now. But first of all, you can help support the channel by subscribing. Now starting off with the outside of the Galaxy S21 FE, this particular phone on the front has a 6.4 inch dynamic AMOLED display and it's an overall pretty good panel. You know, I thought this panel was pretty good when it first came out last year or two years ago and I still think it's like a pretty good looking device. It's a 1080p display, 120Hz display at that as well. And overall, I definitely would tell you that if I'm going to go ahead and buy some sort of device, this thing looks very good, has a lot of power and capability from that particular perspective. Alone, which I do think is a very good asset, I also do think that with this particular phone, the bezels on the side of it are pretty thin that was a pretty big advantage for this phone when you look at a phone like the s21 fe before or the other phones before there were lots of weird things that samsung was kind of doing but with the s23 fe fe the problem i had with that phone last year was that the bezel on that phone was just kind of too big for me and i think that end of itself was kind of an annoying thing so this phone looks better than its successor which very rarely happens. Now what you are getting a USB type C port which is genuinely very nice. I still love having USB type C on top of that you are getting no headphone jack on this thing no micro SD card slot on this thing either which isn't really that big of a deal but you are getting curved flat side on it which is actually a very cool type of side on this thing. I actually do like having this type of build and having this type of capability because it actually is a pretty cool looking thing when it comes down to it so if i'm going to go ahead once again buy some sort of device or whatever ever, i definitely want it to look and feel like this thing because it definitely is a lot more modern than you'd probably expect now on the back side of this thing you do have standard frosted plastic back again it's a weird choice i do understand but i do understand where they're going from like it's supposed to be a cheaper phone when it comes down to it so i don't really even have that much to hate on it from this that particular perspective like i totally get it and if i'm going to go and buy some sort of device like i would want it to feel a little bit more premium than this thing but it is funny because the front of this thing and the sides of this thing feel fairly premium it's just kind of the back side of this thing that just doesn't really do that good of a job in my personal opinion. But beyond that, still totally expected and it's really not even that big of a deal probably for the average person. So from that particular perspective too, that kind of covers it up here on the outside. Now you're still getting a lot of things overlapping with this device that a lot of newer devices have too. So things like, you know, wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, IP certification, 120 hertz display, the Samsung DeX like you're still getting a lot of stuff within this particular phone that a lot of newer phones have. And the price tag of this device has gone down substantially like for the base model of this thing you can probably buy it for like around $2,200 in the used market which is a very very cheap price to pay for a device like this which is genuinely pretty crazy. So when it comes down to it, what I'll definitely tell you is on the exterior, it still gets a thumbs up for me and I think it's a very, very good phone. When it comes down to it now, in terms of the camera side of things, this device is giving you a triple camera setup, which is fairly common with what you'd get with a lot of phones nowadays. 
So you're getting a 12 megapixel wide angle lens, 8 megapixel telephoto, then a 12 megapixel ultra wide fried camera on the front. You're getting a 32 megapixel wide angle lens. Now you are able to do 4K at 60 on the front and the back. And I will tell you with this type of camera, it's a great camera when it comes down to it for this type of device. Now you are missing out on some things like there's no 8K capability on this device or anything like that. But I will still tell you for the average person, still a very, very good type of camera lens and very good type of capability. When it comes down to it once again, I think if I'm going to go and buy some sort of device, this thing is actually a pretty decent device. Device, when it comes down to it from that camera perspective, which I think is a really cool thing. So just keep in mind that in some social media applications and things like that, you're not going to be utilizing that full on camera. It's kind of a common trend with a lot of Android phones, but it's not even the biggest deal in the world. But I still think like if I'm going to go and buy some sort of device, something like the Galaxy S21 FE does a really, really, really good job with basically everything I've ever thrown at it. And I do think from the camera side, there's not really that much to complain about. Here still has a lot of cool features that are a lot of newer like the Galaxy S24 has. But the only thing that this phone doesn't have that the newest phones have basically is not 8K. If that's a big deal to you, then obviously you may want to go for the S20 or S22 or something like that. But I do think that this phone is still perfectly fine from a lot of different ways. And this one is basically no exception when it comes down to it. So from that particular perspective, that kind of covers it up there as well. Now from the software side, this particular device is still getting software updates. So there's not really that much to complain about here from that particular perspective. So with this type of device, you're still getting one UI updates, which I think is still very cool. So once again, there's not really a lot to complain about here with this particular phone. I do think that if you're going to go and buy some sort of device, still a very, very good device when it comes down to it. And I do think that's a really big asset for these types of devices. When it comes down to it, now one UI is great. I think a lot of people have a lot of mixed opinions about One UI and all those types of things. But I do think once again, if I'm going to go and buy some sort of phone, I wanted to have as great of a capability and great experience as possible. And with this type of phone, you're still getting a very good experience key compressor person. One UI is hit or miss for a lot of people, but it's gotten so much better. And I honestly don't think it's even really that big of a deal for a lot of people either. So I do think this in it of itself is a very cool thing in it of itself for this type of product. So that in it of itself, once again, is a very big thing. If you like stock Android, you might want to go for more of a stock Android approach, but it is what it is. I still think it's a very good device when it comes down to it, especially from that software experience standpoint. Now from the performance side, this device is giving you a couple of different things. So for one, it's giving you that Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chipset inside with six or eight GB of RAM. The thing I will tell you about the performance of this particular phone is that for the most part, these types of phones that Samsung makes, they always utilize the Snapdragon chipsets. And I definitely do think this in and of itself is a very good asset for this type of debug device because you're going to be able to go ahead and get this phone as you normally would and is going to have a lot of capability and of itself of just being able to go through and just use it as you normally would i do think with this type of device the chipset the performance everything about it is very good i genuinely don't have that much to complain about here with this particular phone and I do think once again, that's a very big thing to keep in mind from the performance side, really, whatever you're going to do with that, whatever you're going to do, what you're going to throw at it is going to be perfectly fine. For the most part, it's not going to be like a perfect performing device, but I would tell you for the most part, you're going to be having a very good time with it, which once again, I think is a very cool thing from high intensive games to low intensive games to high intensive applications, video editing on your device, photo editing, taking calls, all those types of things, you're going to be having a really good time with this particular phone, which once again, genuinely, I think is a very good thing going on for this particular device. So what I can kind of tell you is with the S21 FE, it's a very good phone. 
where it comes down to it it's not perfect and if you can swing for the regular s21 that would probably be a better device or if you can get as21 plus or an s22 any version of a phone that you can get is a higher end model of this thing is going to be giving you a better experience but i will still tell you the galaxy s21 fe is a very surprising phone they did a really good job with it and i still think it's very much worth buying now if you're going to keep this phone for like three or five years i would not recommend buying it i'd probably recommend going for the s22 or above but if you're still cool and you want to like use this phone for like a two-year two-year period or something i still think this is a very good phone when it comes down to it so that kind of covers it up there if you have any other thoughts or questions let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that helped me so much but definitely hit that subscribe button more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopeful i'll catch you guys in the next video till then bye